As president of the World Wrestling Federation, I am well aware of the recent and overwhelming show of public support for the reinstatement of the macho man, Randy Savage. Let it be known that this office does not take this issue lightly and has once again taken the matter under advisement. You're supposed to bring it back now. Dude, bring it back. Hmm. What's going on, everybody? How are you doing today? Here I am in Toronto. I'm at my sister's house. Um, let me show you something here. Hmm. Well, there we get them face to face. Honky Tonk Man, Jake the Snake. Remember them? Back in the day, Honky Tonk Man's nose is blue. I played with them a lot, these dolls, when I was a kid. I have a huge collection of these, and they're all packed away, but I broke those two out. Because this video is about Jack Tunney, president of the WWF, back in the late 80s, early 90s. And you see, I've been doing YouTube now for three years, so roughly. But I've been doing stuff like this my whole life. Like when it comes to visiting graves, filming locations, pop culture. So immersed in pop culture my entire life. And now, this, but the star of my channel is the subject matter. It's where I go, it's who I'm uh, paying tribute to. It's not me, it's what it, the channel is about, the, the subject matter. The channel is about where I am, not me. But I do like to interject or you know put in, because it's personal to me, every video to me is personal. It's something I, I, I wanna see or it means something to me. And Jack Tunney means a lot to me. And I want you to listen to something right now. Just gonna flip the camera around. And then I'll tell you about it. So check out this old boom box. It still works. I hope you can hear this. Wrestling happened. Hello, Mr. Jack Tunney? Yes. Um, this is Scott? Yes. I was wondering if I could have my interview now? Yeah, hold on for a second. Okay. Yeah, that's me, uh, when I was a little kid. I'm gonna guesstimate probably about nine or 10. Uh, it's BP, before puberty, you tell by the voice. Yeah, probably around that age. And if you look here, I don't know if you can see that well. It's my name, interview with Jack Tunney, president of WWF, side A. So I have a cassette of me interviewing Jack Tunney, president of WWF when I was a kid. And also on this tape, on the other side is like me interviewing, um, uh, friends, and then talking to a girl on the phone. She knew she was being recorded. We were just talking, we were just having fun and talking and making jokes. <laughs> and then my mom's on it too, who recently passed away. So uh, that was weird listening to it when I broke out the tape, very weird. Uh, but Jack Tunney gave me the time of day when I was a kid and did an interview with me. And I'm gonna drive up to the cemetery now and play you bits of that interview. Um, it's probably about 15, 20 minutes long, so I'm gonna chop it up. Just play some uh, highlights, I guess you could say, <laughs> of me talking to the president of WWF. I remember I um, was, I was, because my father loved wrestling, so I didn't like it at first, and then I really got into it. Really hardcore for about four, three or four years. And then I was at Maple Leaf Garden seeing a wrestling match, and then I saw Jack Tunney, and then I saw him walk across the street. And he walked into his office, I, get, I didn't know it was the time, it was, on Carlton Street in Toronto, right across from Maple Leaf Gardens. So I followed him with my father, and I talked to him. And I asked him if I could interview him for my, for my I was about to say for my channel, <laughs> for a school project. And he said, sure, call me on Monday or Tuesday, whenever it was. So we'd set it up, and I called him, and then... After that, he invited me down to the gardens to the next match. My father took me to all of them, but, I, but this one we got to go and sit ringside. And Jack Tenney gave me some souvenirs and stuff. And it was like incredible. He was an amazing man. To me, he was everything. I, I was just enthralled by his stories and what he told me. And I'm gonna play bits of it while we drive up to the cemetery and pay tribute to Jack Tunney. So like I said, the video is about Jack Tunney, but you're gonna be hearing me as a little kid talking to him. And I'll tell you a bit about his life as well. He's a pretty fascinating guy. Okay, let's go. Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, it's my pleasure to introduce to you the president of the World Wrestling Federation, Mr. Jack Tunney. 
And Mr. Tooney, I understand that you have a clarification on the suspension of Andre the Giant. Yes, let me just explain something, Kenny. The uh, suspending Andre the Giant was one of the worst things I had to do uh, as president of the WWF. So Maple Leaf Wrestling was the unofficial name in the 1970s and 1980s of the professional wrestling promotion run by Frank Tunney here in Toronto. His nephew was Jack Tunney, and after Uncle Frank's death, Jack and his cousin Eddie took over the operation. Originally, they were aligned with the NWA, which was a promotion ran out of Charlotte, North Carolina, but then they switched to being aligned with the WWF. They began promoting only WWF cards. This maneuver made Toronto a WWF city and was instrumental in consolidating the company's power base in Canada. The WWF quickly exploded all over the world. And here in Toronto, there were several sellouts of 18,000 at the Gardens. And then at the CNE Stadium here in Toronto, there was also a, a, one of the biggest shows ever, which drew 65,000 people with a gain of over $1 million. In the summer of 1984, the WWF named Jack Tunney as president. This made Tunney known to fans in the United States and elsewhere. The title was really ceremonial only, as he held no backstage power beyond that of a regional promoter. But his main roles were that of a storyline authority figure and to announce major decisions or events on television. Wrestling happened. Hello, Mr. Jack Tunney? Yes. Um, this is Scott? Yes. I was wondering if I could have my interview now? Yeah, hold on for a second. Okay. Okay. And I'm just, because we're, me, I'm doing a project on wrestling for personal interest. Okay. Okay, I'm just going to ask you about 10 questions. Okay. Um, I'll, you're the president of the WWF, right? That's right. Um, okay, um, what exactly do promoters do? What do promoters do? Yes. Okay, they, uh, uh, they get an idea of a wrestling match, if they're a wrestling promoter, that the people would like to see. So you try and sign the wrestlers, one to meet the other, on a certain date. Then you go and try and rent an arena for that certain date. Then you uh, advertise and uh, get promotional material printed in the paper and on radio and TV uh, to publicize your event. Then, of course, you, uh, you have to guarantee the wrestlers so much money, actually uh, going backward a little bit, before you bring them in, you, you were promised them so much money. So you're looking at a very expensive situation. A promoter uses his own money to uh, put a show together. Okay, um, Hulk Hogan, you know Hulk Hogan, um, he yes, makes... Yes, I know Hulk Hogan. Um, Everybody knows Hulk. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Uh, he makes, he makes, is it true that he makes 15% of, of what, whatever the gate is? No, it's not. It's not true? No. Okay, um, how did you get started in the business? Now, my uncle was a promoter here in Toronto since 1931. Frank Tunney? Frank Tunney, my uncle. Mm. And he was a uh, promoter in uh, Maple Leaf Gardens from 1931 until he passed away three years ago, uh, May. Okay, um, what are the advantages of being a promoter? That may be hard to answer. No, it's not hard to answer. Well, it's, I get a lot of satisfaction out of seeing the people enjoy themselves. Uh, it's very rewarding financially sometimes. I can give you a lot of disadvantages too. Um, what are the disadvantages? In the winter time, uh, when you have a bad snowstorm and people can't get to your building, uh, then you lose a ton of money because uh, you have the wrestlers and everybody there, the ring set up, your uh, advertising all done and paid for, and uh, the fans can't get to the arena. It's not uh, the roads uh, you can't navigate on. So Scott, it's tremendously windy now today. Here I am at Holy Cross Catholic Cemetery. I've been here a few times before in my life and I was just here about, I guess about three weeks ago, doing a video about Emmanuel Jacques, a young boy who was murdered here in Toronto. Uh, but today I'm here for Jack Tunney. I'm gonna go check on Emmanuel's grave afterwards, I think. See if what I left is still there. Um, you can see it's a huge cemetery. It stretches over a city block. But I know the general area of where Mr. Tunney is and I'm gonna find him right now and play some more of that interview as I'm searching. Okay, we'll find him together. Um, about who draws the biggest crowd on a wrestling card? Hulk Hogan. Hulk Hogan? Yes, sir. Um, what about Andre the Giant? Andre the Giant does too. He's one, two, and like the uh, Hogan would be number one and uh, Andre is probably number two. Then mm. you get the British Bulldogs and so forth. Like it's, uh, there's a long list. Yep.
different towns are different too, like uh, Andre the Giant may outdraw Hulk Hogan in some town. Is there any, about who is the top villain that draws the biggest crowd? Well, it's uh, the uh, macho man who's the champion now. Yeah. He draws well because he's champion. Yeah. Uh, Greg Valentine and Brutus Beefcake, people come, they want to see them get beaten. Uh, you know, and on and on. Bundy is, uh, uh, he's a real attraction. Mm-hmm. And as is Big John Stutt, but we're getting into uh, strictly the uh, the size of the guys now. Yeah. Mm-hmm. If you use Find a Grave, uh, the website to find graves, uh, usually they're, it's right on. Sometimes it's a little off. It could lead you in different directions. Sometimes it's wrong. But more often than not, it's completely right. Um, this one was completely right, except the grave is so over, the grass has grown over it so much really difficult I, I kept walking by it because i didn't even notice it was a grave um but i found mr tunny here and i believe his wife right here so you can see here's jack tunny's grave right here and his wife ann who predeceased him by 13 years yeah the graves the the it's really overgrown I'd like to clear it up a little bit, clean it up a little bit. I mean, I guess it happens, but a lot of the bigger plaques, uh, headstones, sorry, are they stand above the ground a little bit higher so they're cleared easier. These ones that are lower, smaller, they just tend to kind of sink into the ground a bit. We'll try to clear it off. I like to make sure it's nice and clean. Wow. Um, I know you probably would ask this a lot, but um, do you do you think really think wrestling is fake? Do I think? Yes. Do I think what? Wrestling is fake. No, I don't think wrestling is fake. If I thought wrestling was fake, I wouldn't be involved in it. I have to shave every morning. I have to look myself in the face. And if I uh, was presenting shows that were fake, I, w- I wouldn't be able to live with it. I'm, uh, I have too many morals for that. I'm too ethical. Um, yeah. Is, uh, do, you, do you think um, being a promoter is a fun job? Uh, to me, it's a fun job. It's uh, all kinds of variety. I just love it. I, I don't know of anything else I'd rather be doing. Um, yeah. Very, very happy with my job. I'm, I'm one of the lucky ones. Yeah. So, um, wh- about how long do wrestlers, um, can their career be? Well, there are, it's, it's like hockey, like it's not very long. However, there are exceptions, like Whipper was over 50 when the yeah, car accident. Yeah, my grandpa knows him. And he was over 50 when the car accident stopped his career. Yeah. But he, uh, uh, other guys are only good till about 33, 34, 35. See, a wrestler hits his peak around 28 to 30. Yeah, but Nick Brockwinkle, he must be. Do you know him? Yeah, I know Nick. He must be about 50 or over. I don't know how old Nick is. He's a, he's an excellent wrestler, though. Yep. See, uh, you see, an older wrestler has a great advantage over a younger wrestler because you know, he doesn't have to rely on strength. Like, you're into leverage and little moves that'll put another guy right on his rear end. Yeah. The guy doesn't even know. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, Scott, we'll talk to you. Okay, thank you very much. Bye. If you want to visit Mr. Tiny's grave, just come all the way in off of the Young Street entrance. Drive all the way towards the back, and you can see this mausoleum, these two statues, monuments statues right here and look for that particular tree there and then right down just follow that row along and the tinies are right there and of course I brought something for Mr. Tiny to leave here I was now thinking I should have brought a wrestler to leave on his grave but I see those wrestlers and that I have 
whole collection of them and they remind me of my father in my childhood um, so I want to hold on to those but Mr. Tiny was really gracious with his time to a young kid he didn't have to be I was so really shocked that he I remember just being like blown away that I was talking to somebody that I saw on TV all the time and that he was the president of the WWF and I was actually talking to him and that he took the time and that just kind of shows what kind of guy he was thank you Mr. Tunney all these years later wow in the 1990s Jack Tunney's appearances on television and live events grew less frequent in 1995, Vince McMahon chose to run the shows in Toronto without any involvement from the Tunnies. The final show at Maple Leaf Gardens was held on September 17, 1995. That year, Jack Tunney was forced out of the WWF, after which he retired and disappeared from the wrestling scene. On January 24, 2004, at the age of 69, Jack Tunney died of a heart attack in his sleep at his home in Waterdown, Ontario. There was no one from the World Wrestling Federation present at his funeral, and his death was not announced on WWE World Wrestling Entertainment .com. Okay, so from Holy Cross Catholic Cemetery here in Toronto, Thornhill. Yeah, that was Jack Tunney's grave. Wow. President of the WWF. Maker of dreams <laughs> for the wrestlers and for all us kids and adults who watched it back in the day. And I know people still watch wrestling, of course. But to me, I don't think it gets any bigger than Hulk Hogan, Randy Savage, Ultimate Warrior, those days. I don't know. Maybe it's just as big. But those, to me, when I was a little kid, that was everything. Andre the Giant. He was my favorite. Jack Tunney, you're my favorite too. All right, this has been amazing. Peace. Peace to Jack Tunney and his wife, Anne. Peace to you. Peace out.